So we can start with our x, y line. We'll draw what was given to us, which is the cone that has a diameter 80. It has a height of 86. Remember that when we're drawing at the start, we draw everything in light pencil. So I've drawn this first sphere, okay, I want to find it down in plan, so what I'll do is I'll bring it out to the side-by-side -side view, so therefore it's going to roll along the ground, and I'm also then going to take the radius of the sphere, which is 24, and I'm going to step out by 24 parallel to the edge of the cone. So it's up from the ground 24 and out from the edge of the cone 24. And the skill I'll use to draw my parallel lines will be called sliding set squares. So I set one set square up to the edge of the cone, the other set square underneath, and I slide it along to my point and draw my parallel line. That there is now the center of my fake sphere, so I'm just call it, gonna call that C. I'm not even gonna bother drawing the fake sphere there because it's only gonna confuse me later on, so I will bring it down to the extreme generator of the cone and I will swing it around to where I need to do it. You can, of course, if you wanted to draw the fake sphere, by all means, please do. And once I have this radius, I can draw the real sphere in here. Now, I also need to find the point of contact between the sphere and the cone. So from the fake position or the side by side, I'm gonna draw my normal from the center, 90 degrees to the tangent. That gets me my normal, and this is P1, fake point of contact. I'm going to bring that down to the extreme generator of the cone. I'm gonna swing that around. And I'll join the two centers of the circles. And the point of contact has to be somewhere on that line, so therefore that's P, or POC. I'll bring POC up. Where do I stop when I bring it up? Well, whatever height it is in front elevation has to be the same height as it rolls across. So therefore that's going to be the first POC. Okay. So once I have that information, I know how to do that, I can continue that going forward. So the information for part two is that the center point is up 50 millimeters from the base. So I step up 50 millimeters and I draw a line. 
I know that my new sphere is going to be, the center point for my new sphere is going to be somewhere along that line. I'm now going to take singular objects. I'm going to either take the cone and the new sphere, or the sphere and the new sphere. I'm going to isolate them and do them separately. Okay? So, if I take the cone, I know the center point has to be somewhere along that, and I know that the radius of my new sphere is 20 millimeters, so I will step out by 20. And again, I'll do a parallel line using the sliding set squares technique. So set one set square up to the side of the cone, set the other set square up underneath, slide it along to your measurement, and draw your line. That is my fake position of my um, fake position of my new sphere. Again, I'm going to draw now what's the normal to get the radius. So from the center of my sphere, 90 degrees to the tangent gives me my normal. That gives me my fake point of contact, which I'm going to call P2. It also gives me the radius for which to draw my sphere or circle. Okay, I then bring that down. Again, this is fake. We'll bring it down to the side of the cone. Okay, to the extreme generator of the cone. And we'll swing it around the cone. Where will it go? I don't know yet, but I know it's going to be somewhere in position S here like the question was given. Okay, it's going to be somewhere there. So that's as much really as I can do for that shape. I'll find the fake point of contact later once I have the finished position. So I'm just not worried about that just yet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the sphere on its own, the first sphere, and find the new sphere in contact with that. Again, I know that the new sphere center has to be somewhere along here, and it has to touch this circle. So if I add the radii together, which is 24 for this one and 20 for the new one, that's a total of 44 millimeters. So if I measure out horizontally 44 millimeters, set my compass to that measurement, and swing it until it hits that line, that gives me my fake center point. Why am I joining up the two centers? Because that will find me the point of contact, which in turn will find me the radius to draw this sphere. Another little tip, guys, that I want people to get out of the habit of. I haven't seen anybody doing it, but I've seen students before doing it. Nobody in this room I've seen, but do not set your compass up to the to the ruler like this, okay? So don't put it on the set square and set your compass to that measurement. Draw the measurement on the page somewhere and set it up to the page because you're gonna throw yourself off because the thickness of the glass, or the, the plastic, sorry, is gonna be whatever millimeters thick and it could throw you off. And the thickness of your lead on your compass, the thickness of the lead on your pencil, all of that matters. So you want it nice and accurate and neat. So set it up to whatever's on the page. All right, I hope that makes sense. So this is center, and um, fake center, that'll be fake center two, fake center three. So bring fake center three down. Remember, I'm isolating just this sphere on its own, ignoring the cone, so I'm gonna bring it down to the extreme generator of the sphere, and I'll swing it around it. So we keep spinning that around until it meets the other arc. And this is the, if that was C, this is the other center point, the finished center point, which is now C4. Okay. So I set my compass up to radius 20. I can draw this in heavier because it is the finished position. 
Okay, I'll finish this question off and then I'll uh, throw it up online, okay? Can you finish it off for homework tonight, please, guys? And that's that question solved, okay? So I'm going to try that up online now.